So the Grow Water Burgers, hey, I'm gonna do a basically a year and a half review on them. So some of them I had longer than others. A quick update on them and tell you if I'm still liking them, if I'm gonna upgrade, change it something else. Bottom line is, I'm not changing them at this point. I've liked them. I haven't had any serious problems with them. You know, the things just work. I like that they will auto start if you use too much power and you go over the, the maximum amount of wattage it will put out. They will turn off, but then they will kick back on. It hasn't happened a ton. It has happened a couple times with me because my house, you know, my crowd, I, my kids are homeschooled and they're all here all day and they can use a lot of power. So they use two air conditioners, had their dryer running, washer and dryer, and then somebody start cooking and then somebody start taking a shower. You know, if all that stuff's running at the same time, absolutely, I could go over the power that these uh, grow watts are rated for. And basically what I do to reduce that load at one time is tell them, hey, either you're gonna have the dryer on or be cooking using the stove and, and all that kind of stuff. Either you're gonna be doing kitchen stuff or the dryer. You can't be doing both of them at the same time, even though you can if nothing else is running, but that's just my one way that I know if you're not doing that, you're not gonna overload the system if everything else is running. The water heater, both the air conditioners, you know, refrigerators, freezers, lights, all that kind of normal stuff. Without that dryer, and that stove run at the same time, usually gonna be good to go. You know, they'll take uh, in 6,000, about 6,000 watts of solar a piece, and two of them, that's what I have on it. I have about 12.4 kW uh, of solar panels, and it's going into two of the grow watts. One of them doesn't have any solar going into it, because I added it uh, at a later time. I just haven't added more solar yet, which I plan on doing, but bottom line, they're a budget friendly option at this point because they've added all these different inverters now and people from what i'm hearing have having a lot of problems with the software and just you know glitching and stuff like that it's having tons of problems if you watch youtube videos you'll see it people having tons of problems with a lot of new inverters it, a lot of the new technology is good stuff but they don't have the software right you know if you watch will prouse channel you'll hear him talking about it he had the eg4 i think it was like an 8k inverter and I think he's had like four of them from Signature Solar and they've all had some kind of, some of them have hardware problems, but most of them just been like the software and it's not Signature Solar's fault. It's, it's EG4, I guess, you know, they're trying to put out the stuff so fast and not doing enough testing. And I like EG4 stuff, you know, I'll, I'll buy EG4 stuff. I got a bunch of their batteries. I bought nine of them. So, you know, I'm an EG4 fan but every company now is trying to put out the stuff so fast to stay ahead of the competition that, you know, they might not be doing all the testing that they need to do all the time they need to do at least. They might do some testing, but it's not long enough time and not enough units. They might have a few units, might do five or 10 units and they all work. And then, you know, 50 out of 100, I got a software problem, a glitch. You know, either they won't start charging on the solar when it starts up, just random stuff. I don't have a problem with the grow watt because they've been selling grow watts for years. You know, they're one of the biggest inverter uh, manufacturers in the world, a lot bigger internationally than they are with the United States. But you know, the last few years with, with YouTube, they kind of blown up. So a lot of people have them in the United States now and I haven't had any problems with them. So I highly recommend them after my year and a half of using them and I'm not getting rid of mine no time soon at least i mean everybody would like to upgrade to something that can put out more power but you know i'd have to rewire stuff and you know i have to put in a lot of time and effort to do that i may do it one day but i don't plan on it the menus and stuff is pretty easy to use the manual is actually pretty decent for something that's manufactured overseas unlike a lot of things you know it's decent at least it's not terrible so you can actually go through it and use it and step by step it'll tell you what each number is you know you can input whatever you want. Like I've said before, I like this. You can set it up to auto restart when it overloads. You know, so you can have that actually turned off if you don't want it on. You know, there's a lot of different settings. You can use the utility to charge your batteries back at a certain rate. I'm not doing that. I do have the, the charge verter. You probably can't see it up in the screen. So if I need to charge my batteries up, I'm gonna use a generator and charge them back up that way. I'm not gonna use the grid. My whole point is trying to be as self-reliant as possible. So I'm trying not to use the grid unless I have to. And I'm still using it when I need to, but at least recently I haven't been using it. So we'll see how that goes. So what kind of questions do y'all have about the grow watt? If you have one, let me know how you like it down in the comments below. If you were looking at one and you know, you're know trying to build your own system out, what questions do you have for me or anybody else that you can put in the comments below? Let's let me know. If you like this kind of video, hey, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and thanks for watching.